Nicola Sturgeon's SNP has been accused of trying to undermine the UK's post-Brexit talks with Brussels, purely to suit her relentless quest for Scottish independence. Michelle Ballantyne, the former Scottish Tories MSP who is now leader of Reform UK Scotland, launched her incendiary attack in response to claims by Marie Goujon, Scotland's Rural Affairs Secretary, that quitting the bloc has failed to deliver any discernible benefits north of the border. Specifically, Ms Goujon highlighted what she claimed to be the negative impact of leaving the EU on the food and drink industry north of the border. However, she was got short shrift by Ms Ballantyne, who served as a member of the Scottish Parliament for the South Scotland region from 2017 to 2021. Ms Ballantyne told Express.co.uk, the Scottish Government needs to start working on behalf of our industries rather than using them as an excuse to drive their own divisive political agenda. To suggest there are no benefits only highlights the negativity and dependency on EU dogma that pervades the Scottish Government's thinking. Our exit from the EU offers the opportunity to have an agricultural policy that suits the needs of Scotland and ensures that payments get to our farmers on time. The SNP should be working alongside the UK government to push back against the EU's unreasonable demands, rather than flying the EU flag and endeavouring to undermine any negotiations, Ms Ballantyne stressed. She added, being able to control our fishing waters as well as landing and processing the catch on our shores should be a massive boost to Scotland. Delays in exporting fresh shellfish because of the absence of ferries underpins the incompetence of the Scottish Government as it tries to deflect blame. Exports to the EU remain relatively small but many of our products, whether it is our seed potatoes or shellfish see a not just to be replicated elsewhere and therefore will always be in demand. The pandemic has undoubtedly muddied the waters, with lorry drivers needing to negotiate complicated and constantly changing COVID health regulations, Ms Ballantyne pointed out. She said, whilst many of the tables that our produce is destined for have been closed or heavily restricted for many months causing damage to our food and drink sector. Whether it is rethinking how we subsidize our food sector, reducing regulatory burdens or exploring opportunities to reduce disease in crops, Ms Goujon appears to lack a positive attitude to grasp any opportunities for the future and it is this lack of vision that contributes to Scotland's flagging economy. If she can't see any benefits perhaps she should consider whether she is the right person to be negotiating our future. Speaking prior to a meeting of the Interministerial Group for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, which brings together ministers from the devolved administrations and the UK government, Ms Goujon said, two years on, Brexit has failed to deliver a single benefit for Scotland's rural communities, or the countless food and drink businesses that support them. Fragile rural and island communities are bearing the brunt of a hard Brexit, recklessly pursued while a global pandemic has ravaged our society and our economy. She added, Scotland's food and drink sector has been a global success story, providing highly paid, highly skilled jobs, and businesses, often in remote rural and island communities.
but Brexit has caused labor and skills shortages and created barriers to trade that have harmed many businesses and communities in the short term, with research suggesting a significant risk to their success in the longer term too. Ms Goujon also pushed for the UK government to engage with the EU to ease the red tape faced by exporting businesses. She said, Scottish exporters are also being forced to cope with a mountain of complex, time-consuming and costly customs and borders arrangements. Businesses put in huge amounts of preparation for the new export health certificates introduced this year, but they still face uncertainty around the level of certification needed to ensure valuable seafood exports enter the EU without delay. The UK government must listen to the needs of Scottish businesses and re-engage in good faith with the EU to find pragmatic solutions to the problems still facing businesses, before they, and the communities they support, endure further unnecessary pain.